Bonsoir à tout le monde et bienvenue. Buenas noches y bienvenidos a todos. Good evening and welcome. My name is Rick Saar, the team leader of the Community of Christ Peace and Justice team. And it's my privilege to preside over this award service tonight. Tonight we recognize the recipient of the International Peace Award sponsored by Community of Christ and the Shaw Family Foundation. Joining me here are President Vizi, Julie Shaw, President of the Shaw Family Foundation, award recipients representing community peacemaker teams, Muriel Schmidt, Julie Brown, Mohammed Salah, and Rochelle Friesen. Also participating are Elizabeth Else from the Community of Christ Peace and Justice team, Litao Nalashibo, and Darwin Kopa. Later in the service, others participating from the Peace and Justice team will be El Ray Henriksen, Andrea Reed Davis, and Andrew Bolton. We extend a special welcome to members of the Church of the Brethren in Warrensburg, who are friends and supporters of community peacemaker teams. Importantly, we acknowledge that this ceremony takes place on lands of indigenous peoples, and we recognize their connections, both spiritual and physical, with this place and celebrate their leaders past, present, and emerging. And unscripted, I can tell you, two members are coming to read in a minute, that the choir, the combined choirs of Graceland University under Dr. Blessing's hand and soloists Connor Holborn and Connor Chase were just so special and wonderful, I'd like to give them another round of applause. Our call to worship tonight is drawn from the Hebrew Scriptures, the New Testament, and will be read in French, English, and Norwegian. First of all, from Matthew 5, Heureux ceux qui procurent la paix, car ils seront appelés fils de Dieu. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. <laughs> and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Vem of this uh, tre? Synes du nå viste sig som en neste for ham som blev overfalt av røvere? Han svarte, den som viste barmhjertighet mot ham. Da sa Jesus, gå du og gjør som han. Please stand for our opening hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory.
us pray. Divine, compassionate creator, we joyfully gather together from near and far, in person and in spirit, to this special place that is dedicated to peace. We praise you for the tapestry of life that you continually create. We thank you for your grace that calls each of us into relationship with you. We also come in anticipation and celebration for lived out actions of followers of peace. Bless those of the community peacemaker teams with whom we celebrate for these actions. We know each faithful step taken is pleasing to you. Help us come into the awareness of your presence here and in our daily lives. As you speak to us in many ways, grant us the wisdom to be aware of the beauty of diversity united in your purposes. Grant us courage to meet each other with love and respect, standing side by side, listening with compassionate hearts and welcoming hands. Grant us the courage to be open to new thoughts, new insights, and new commitments to be instruments of your dream of a loving and just world. We pray in the holy name of the peaceful one. Amen. be seated. Please be seated. Let me invite President Vesey to the podium. I warmly greet everyone in the temple and the many more in the nations around the world who are joining us online for this service. We are so happy that you are part of this experience. It's my privilege and honor to acknowledge the Shaw Family Foundation. The Shaw Family Foundation is our new sponsoring partner for the International Peace Award. The Shaw Family Foundation was founded in 1970 by Francis E. Shaw, J.R. Shaw's father. J.R. was one of the foundation's directors since its inception and was its president from 1978 until his death in 2020. J.R. steered the foundation through steady growth of financial assets and increased funding capacity to support worthy initiatives. These initiatives included enhancing human services, construction and upgrading of vital community facilities, education, seniors housing, cultural enrichment through fine arts, and 
Community of Christ Ministries, all making the world a better place. Community of Christ and the Shaw Family Foundation have a long history. The foundation has provided shared funding for church-related facilities upgrades, ministry revitalization projects in Canada, leadership development, the Canadian Mission Endowment, the Canadian Temple Endowment, Graceland University, and the Temple Complex High Definition Digital Equipment Upgrades that are in process now, just to name a few. And of course, that brings us to the International Peace Award. We have not had a sponsoring partner for this award since 2014. In response to a church proposal, the Shaw Family Foundation Board agreed to provide generous donations over a span of three years to help fund this year's award and to endow the International Peace Award in perpetuity. The new name of the award is the International Peace Award sponsored by Community of Christ and Shaw Family Foundation. Tonight, we are pleased that Carol Shaw, Shaw Family Foundation board member and wife of J.R. Shaw is with us. Likewise, we welcome Julie Shaw, President, Shaw Family Foundation, and daughter of J.R. and Carol Shaw. Julie and Carol, we are deeply grateful for the Shaw Family Foundation's visionary generosity and we look forward to what we will accomplish together in support of peacemakers around the world. Julie, I invite you to share any comments that you would like to make at this time. Good evening. Uh, my name is Julie Shaw, and I am president of the Shaw Family Foundation. And it is my privilege to be here in the Temple Sanctuary to help present the International Peace Award for the first time as its co-sponsor. We are very proud to be partnering with the Community of Christ in celebrating people that promote peace, justice, and protecting the world's natural environment. I have not been in independence for many years, and it is lovely to be back. With us tonight is my mother, Carol, and my partner, Terry Berg, who have also traveled here from Calgary, Canada, to join us tonight. We also have some of the Shaw Family Foundation board members, my mother, Carol, President Steve Vesey, Steve Graffio, and Everett Graffio, who is an honorary member. And I would personally like to thank Everett and his wife, Judy, for their hospitality. As President Vesey mentioned, my grandfather, Francis Searle, and my father, J.R., founded the Shaw Family Foundation over 50 years ago. Since the very beginning, we had the firm conviction that charity never fails. And this remains our family's and foundation's motto to this day. Through this motto, we have been able to witness the impact our philanthropic investments have had on people 
all over the world, allowing positive change. Over the 50 years, we have enjoyed a long relationship with the community of Christ. My father would always say, one of my grandmother's, Lottie's wishes, was to put the church on the map. In fact, one of our foundation's first gifts went to the Erie Beach Camp in Canada. The funds were used to protect its waterfront. Actually, before the foundation was set up, my grandfather, Francis Earl, bought the camp and donated it back to the church. And for many years, our annual family picnics were held at Erie Beach Camp. Over the years, we have enjoyed many joint projects with the church, such as the Shaw Center in the Philippines, which supports many communities in the northern areas, and the revitalization of struggling congregations by hiring and training ministers, volunteer mission advocates, and small group leaders. The result of that work is evident today as we feel the energy in this room. And now to this outstanding endeavor, the International Peace Award. This award gives us an opportunity to recognize the brave souls who work so hard, often with little in the way of resources and support. Hard work is rooted deeply in our family's DNA. And so in some small way, we appreciate what it takes to uphold the values of peace and harmony. This is why when President Steve Vesey proposed that the Shaw Family Foundation consider enabling this award to continue, our board voted unanimously to partner with the Community of Christ in presenting the International Peace Award. We believe that our family and foundation should give back to the causes and the people that have given so much to so many. The community of Christ is a welcoming and loving faith community that truly values the worth of every person and is dedicated to peace. This is why the church is important to our family and to the Shaw Family Foundation. And it is events such as today when we are reminded that we are all connected, even when we are spread all around the world. It is an honor to share this room with such inspiring people. Thank you. Let me invite to the rostrum Litao Nalashibo, who will be taking us through an exercise in the disciples' generous response. For those of you new to our faith, this is the offering. Good afternoon to all. I am Lita Onal Shebo. In some small way, we appreciate what it takes to uphold the values of peace and harmony. This is why when President Steve Viz proposed that Shaw Family Foundation consider enabling this award to continue, our board voted unanimously to partner with the community of Christ in presenting the International Peace Award. We believe that our family and the foundation should give back to the causes and the people that have given so much to so many. The community of Christ is 
a welcoming and a loving faith community that truly values the worth of every person and is dedicated to peace. This is why the church is important to our family and to the Shaw Family Foundation. And it is even such as this today, when we are reminded we are all connected, even when we are spread all around the world. It is an honor to share the room with such inspiring people. Thank you. During this time of disciples' generous response, we focus on aligning our hearts with God's heart. Our offerings are more than meeting budgets or funding missions. We can tangibly express our gratitude to God through our offering, who is the giver of all. Growing up, I had my way of life where I never thought of anybody and not even God. When I became a member of Community of Christ, often when it's time for giving, I would remain worried. After giving, I would be worried and question myself why I have given. And again, if I don't give, I remain worried with the guiltiness of not giving. This made me feel very bad. And I struggled for some time with this. My life had no hope as I couldn't save and plan wisely. Then I came across God's message of hope, which helped me to understand that giving should be done joyfully and willingly. That is Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. And that giving is a way of sharing, responding, and thanking God for his generosity. Now I have found hope for life, especially through the scripture of the poor widow in Mark 12, 41. The widow gave from her heart all that she had. And this was true giving. This has also helped me to start sharing so that others can also experience the love of God. As an African woman, I now feel connected to others. And I don't want to see others suffering if I can help. I have joy and I'm happy to share what I have with others. As we share our mission ties, 
either by placing money in the offering plates or online or by using a provided code on screen and in your daily bulletin, use this time to think how you would respond to this question. How is God calling you to be a blessing in the world? How is God calling you to be a blessing in the world? Our hearts grow aligned with God's when we gratefully receive and faithfully respond by leaving God Christ's mission. Will the ushers please stand? And let us pray. Eternal and loving God, we humble ourselves and acknowledge the fact that we are blessed abundantly. As we share our resources joyfully and faithfully, we know it's a way of glorifying you. Gracious God, you who lavishes our lives with gratitude, sharing freely of our treasures becomes the pattern of our existence. Remind us often of how much you cherish us, of how abundantly you have offered gifts to us. May you help us, Lord, to share our talents, our resources, our testimonies, and our time, so that God's love can be seen in the lives of other people. Amen.
to announce the recipient of the International Peace Award sponsored by Community of Christ and the Shaw Family Foundation, let me invite to the rostrum another member of the Peace and Justice team, Andrew Bolton. I first heard of CPT in this very temple at a peace weekend that I helped co-lead with Paul Edwards of the Korean War Center, around 2000. We had a guest speaker, Jim Youngke, a wonderful friend now from Bethel College, Kansas, who told us at that event about CPT's courageous, nonviolent interventions. Fast forward in 2014, Jewel and I met CPT on the ground in Hebron in, in Israeli-occupied Palestine. We were very impressed. My friend Will Reiser, former mayor of Lamoni, former teacher of Graceland, and now living in France, did two volunteer tours with CPT in Hebron, and that reinforced uh, a growing high impression about CPT. Today, I'm a monthly donor, and in the World Church Peace and Justice team, CPT emerges our first choice out of a long list of 15, then down to a short list of six organizations and individuals that we submitted to the first presidency. The church's first international peace award 30 years ago was in this space. We, would, we gave the award to Dr. Jahan Sadat, a Muslim woman and an Egyptian human rights activist in that very first peace colloquy. So it's in this sacred space 30 years ago that event happened. Sisters, brothers, friends, it's now my very great pleasure to announce Community Peacemaker Teams as the recipient of the International Peace Award sponsored by Community of Christ and Shaw Family Foundation 2023. Casi desde los 12 años eh, he venido siendo acompañado por equipos cristianos Acción por la Paz. A los 14 años de, de convertirme en un, en un constructor de paz, no quiero tener más miedo de desplazarme y quiero hacer una resistencia pacífica y organizada. For 35 years, CPT has been supporting non-violent resistance movements around the world. While a violent act can take place in a second, peace takes time. We are on a long journey alongside those resisting oppression. Our work is built in partnerships and led by local peace builders who seek to bring justice, safety, equality, and dignity to their communities. We are committed to supporting our partners who resist oppression every day. From teacher strikes in Iraqi Kurdistan to prisoner hunger strikes in Palestine, non-violence is a tool for transformation rooted in liberating love. Alongside our partners, we wage non-violent direct action to confront systems of violence and oppression. Over the last three decades, to keep up with ever-evolving militarism and violence, non-violent transformation has had to be creative. Non-violence informs the core of our work, the physical accompaniment of our partners. We take children to school in Palestine as an attempt to reduce the risk of military violence. In Colombia, we travel with human rights defenders, challenging the threat of armed actors. To choose non-violence is to disrupt the status quo and break the cycle of injustice. We are anti-colonial. We are led by indigenous peoples, Colombians, Kurds, Palestinians, 
farmers, workers, migrants. We are also anti-racist. Our accompaniment does not depend on white privilege. Systemic social change requires all of us working together. At CPT, we're about peace with justice. Together, we've supported the social movements that led to a peace agreement in Colombia, been part of the Palestinian struggle for liberation for over 26 years, documented the impacts of Turkish and Iranian cross-border bombings on Kurdish civilians, exposed the torture of Iraqi prisoners in Abu Ghraib at the hands of the US military, accompanied indigenous land defenders and water protectors in their struggle for sovereignty, walked with migrants to court and across border checkpoints, celebrated the small victories of Colombian farmers' right to their land in Las Pavas, Guayabo and Garzal, built a community of people trained in non-violent tactics. Thank you for being part of this community. Whether you're a donor, reservist, delegate, team member, well-wisher, or joined our actions, we could not have done this work without you. Let's continue together on this struggle toward justice and collective liberation. I now invite Julie Shaw, president of Shaw Family Foundation, to accompany Muriel and Rochelle, Julie and Muhammad, representing the community peacemaker teams to come and stand behind the award table. I also invite Steve Graffio, family friend and Shaw Family Foundation board member to escort Carol Shaw to the award table. I will join you in just a moment, but first a few comments about the award. Tonight, Community Peacemaker Teams joins a highly distinguished group of internationally recognized peacemakers who have received the International Peace Award, sponsored by Community of Christ and Shaw Family Foundation. We do this in recognition of your significant contribution to peacemaking through nonviolent accompaniment with those actively working for human rights and just peace. Your work includes spiritually centered peacemaking, evidenced through your multi-faith relationships and organization. And we recognize that you do all this with a willingness to put yourselves in harm's way. Community of Christ and Shaw Family Foundation are especially pleased that you are willing to accept this International Peace Award. While no award, physical or financial, can adequately acknowledge the power of your peacemaking presence, we hope that somehow what we are doing here is a blessing and an encouragement to you as you work for the sake of all of us and our home planet. Each recipient of the International Peace Award is given a beautiful bronze peace sculpture mounted on a solid wood base. There's a wonderful story associated with this sculpture. Gail Sundell, the Wyoming artist who created the sculpture, recounts, I thought of the idea of God handing the earth to each of us, and I needed a model of hands. So I asked my husband Tom and our son to be my models. 
I wanted the larger hand placing the earth in the smaller hand. When I was through with the sketch, I realized that what I wanted to say was that we as adults are handing the world to our children. The result is the sculpture you see before you. However, I want to add that each sculpture, though based on the same concept, always has some unique details related to each one of them. Gail Sundell and members of her family are here with us. Gail, would you please stand? Thank you. And Tom can stand. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing your artistic gifts and your hands, Tom, in such a wonderful and meaningful way. Of course, this sculpture and public recognition are accompanied by a financial gift of 25000 U.S. dollars. This gift from Shaw Family Foundation and Community of Christ is given to you to support whatever cause, initiative, or project you choose. Julie, would you please hand the check to Muriel? Now, with the indulgence of the assembly here and those online, I'm going to go put myself in the picture, and I will position myself at the table with the others, and we will be under the direction of the photographers, after which Julie Shaw will invite Muriel to this podium to share her comments. Come stand by me. Sure. Thank you, Steve. My father, J.R. Shaw, was a strong proponent of peace and safe and vibrant communities. People and communities grow and prosper when there is peace. Without peace and harmony, we are bound to lose political democracy, economic stability, and growth in our cultures. We are thrilled that the first award of our partnership is being presented to the Community Peacemaker Team and applaud your 35 years of nonviolence approach through partnerships to build a base of dignity. Muriel, it is our pleasure to have presented you with a check of $25,000. We know you will put it to good use. And now, Please join me in welcoming Meryl Schmidt to the podium, who will speak on behalf of the Community Peacemaker Team. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> okay. I want to um, thank everyone that's here and everyone that isn't here, because without you, there would be no me 
or know you. For God has truly blessed, blessed us as we gather together, we know that we are going to go forward as we spread the news of the wonder of his creation. Thank you. On behalf of the entire CPT community, greetings to all of you, greetings and gratitude. It is a great honor for me to be standing tonight in front of you to represent CPT and to receive with my colleagues, Julie, Mohammed, Rochelle, and virtually, you'll hear her later, Milena, uh, to receive uh, this beautiful recognition for the work that CPT has done for the past 35 plus years. My colleagues and I do not stand alone here tonight. Our cloud of witnesses, as we like to call them, accompany us. Many have come before us and we are bringing with us their spirit and their deep dedication to peace. As we gather here, our field teams, some of them you have seen in the video, our field teams are working for peace on behalf of CPT across the globe, in Palestine, in Colombia, in Iraqi Kurdistan, in Greece, and here on Turtle Island. They are here with us as well. Additionally, each one of our teams accompany local peace activists who are resisting oppression and fighting for their rights. We are here with them too. On behalf of the entire CPT community from around the world, greetings to all of you, greetings and gratitude. It is an honor for CPT to be recognized by the Community of Christ and the Shaw Family Foundation by its 2023 International Peace Award. Others have been recognized by this award before us. A few of them even have crossed CPT's path. And we find ourselves in esteemed company. As you know, the work of peace and justice is never isolated. We're all ultimately working together for a world to be transformed by hopes and dreams and countless acts of solidarity. With this Peace Award, you are weaving invisible threads among all of us. CPT started in the mid-1980s as an explicitly Christian enterprise under the name Christian Peacemaker Teams. Its founders came from the, the Anabaptist movement and belong to what is traditionally called the peace churches, Mennonites, Brethren, and Quakers. The first members of CPT understood Christian discipleship as a political act that required of the follower of Jesus to resist violence in all its forms. Many of them were white Christian from the US and they took a stand against their government and its military might. As we recently mark the 20th anniversary of invasion of Iraq by the US Army and we witness every day military power, guns and armed forces crushing many communities, lands, and ideals everywhere, we believe that Christian discipleship remains a political act that we need to embody. And I know the community of Christ, as well as the Shaw Foundation, is contributing to the work of justice in many ways as well. Last year, CPT adopted a new name, Community Peacemaker Teams. We found on our way so many people 
from so many traditions and backgrounds who were dedicated to peace, nonviolence, and solidarity that we wanted to reflect this diversity in our name. Today, CPT gathers Christian, Muslims, atheists, animists, and Jews coming from more than 10 different countries grounded in their own spirituality, working for peace and justice. This week, during your World Conference, you will spend some time discussing the parable of the Good Samaritan from Luke's Gospel, chapter 10. So let me talk a little bit about it. As you know, the parable of the Good Samaritan is, very, is a very famous story. In Christian circles and even outside of those circles, the expression Good Samaritan has become a shorthand for doing what is right, helping the people in need, and showing compassion. Some may not even know the full story told by Jesus, but would probably understand what it means to be a good Samaritan. Traditionally, the parable of the Good Samaritan has been read as a call for Christians to practice neighborly love. Luke inserts this story in the middle of a series of instructions for his followers. According to Luke, Jesus tells the parable of the Good Samaritan to a man, expert in the law, who asks him what he needs to do to inherit eternal life. In response, Jesus tells the parable and ends with, go and do likewise. It almost sounds like a recipe, go and do likewise. That sounds easy, no? Martin Luther King used the parable of the Good Samaritan in two of his most famous speeches. And as you would expect, Dr. King's add another layer to the reading and interpretation of the parable. I want to read you an excerpt from one of King, Dr. King's speech Maybe you have already heard it, but you see, Dr. King is big in our cloud of witnesses, and it is always inspiring to hear his voice. I quote, Now you know, we use our imagination a great deal to try to determine why the priest and the Levite didn't stop. At times we say they were busy going to a church meeting, an ecclesiastical gathering, and they had to get on down to Jerusalem so they would not be late for their meeting. At other times, we would speculate that there was a religious law, that one who was engaged in religious ceremonials was not to touch a human body 24 hours before the ceremony. But I'm going to tell you what my imagination tells me. It's possible that those men were afraid. You see, the Jericho Road is a dangerous road. It's winding. It's meandering. It's really conducive for ambushing. In the days of Jesus, it came to be known as the Bloody Pass. And you know, it's possible that the priest and the Levite looked over that man on the ground and wondered if the robbers were still around. Or it's possible that they felt that the man on the ground was merely faking and he was acting like he had been robbed and hurt in order to lure them there for quick and easy seizure. And so the first question that the priest asked, the first question that the Levite asked, if I stop to help this man, what will happen to me? End of quote. What will happen to me? 
Let's face it, many Christians, and others too, have more often been priests and Levites than Good Samaritans, be it out of fear or lack of time, or obligation to other duties, or mere selfishness. It may sometimes be easier to be like the priest and the Levite. In order to go and do likewise, in order to be like the Good Samaritan, we need to break our prejudice, interrupt our journey, stop. What will happen to me if I stop? Dr. King goes further in his reading of the parable. I quote, on the one hand, we are called to play the Good Samaritan on life's roadside, but that will be only an initial act. One day we must come to see that the whole Jericho Road must be transformed so that men and women will not be constantly beaten and robbed as they make their journey on life's highway. True compassion is more than flinging a coin to a beggar. It comes to see that an edifice which produces beggar needs restructuring." End of quote. True compassion is more than flinging a coin to a beggar. This is harsh. But it points to another essential question. How do we transform the very structures that oppress people, rob them of their rights, their livelihood, and their dignity, and leave them on the side beaten and robin, robbed? CPT made the decision right at the beginning of its existence, and that was not an easy decision to make, that we would not provide any humanitarian aid. In exchange, Upon invitation only, our teams accompany local peace and civil rights activists who are fighting to change unjust structures and address power imbalance in their own context. It doesn't mean we have it all right, no. We are learning every single day how difficult and challenging it is to build partnership to transform violence and oppression, our mission statement. And we are learning from the people who have been left on the side, robbed and beaten by many systems of oppression, economic injustice, environmental destruction, extreme militarization, colonialism and neo-colonialism, white privilege and white supremacy, patriarchy, and heterosexism, you name it. What will happen to me if I stop? What will happen to me if I question our policies, our history, the root of our values? What will happen to me if I dismantle all systems of oppression one bit at a time? Am I going to fall apart too? The theme of the 2023 Community of Christ World Conference is courage. Courage can take many forms, as you all know. Often, however, only a few, a few forms are regarded as true courage and made into heroism. Soldiers, individuals who fight terminal illness with dignity, and of course, people like Dr. King, who relentlessly fight for justice. All of them are individuals regarded as clear examples of courage, heroes. At the end, Dr. King's word invites us to ask, what about me then? Am I courageous? Have I stopped my journey? Have I looked around to see if everyone is safe and can continue on their journey? 
In response to these questions, I have to conclude for myself that I am courageous only as I walk together with others going in the same direction. I am courageous only when I am not alone on the road. For the many Jericho roads of our world cannot be traveled alone. And this is CPT's commitment to accompany, to walk with, so that the road is a little bit less scary. Your wonderful peace award, your recognition for the work of CPT gives us courage, encourage us literally to continue our journey. The work of peace and justice can never be done in isolation. Your community, our community, will continue to walk together. It is a long and challenging walk, but we are walking in the same direction and can be courageous together. From our community to your community, greetings and deep gratitude. Estimados integrantes de la Community of Christ. Respected members of the Community of Christ, today I greet you from the ancestral lands of the Moisca people in the central Andean region of Colombia. I want to start this message in gratitude for your recognition of the work of Community Peacemaker Teams, CPT. I also want to honor all the communities and grassroots organizations in Palestine, Turtle Island, known as North America, Colombia, Iraqi Kurdistan, and Greece, and other countries where we have been for their trust and invitation to CPT to accompany their efforts to build just, peaceful, and sustainable societies. Without their invitations, we would not be here. Accompaniment is a strategy based on three fundamental pillars. The first is protection, an approach based on the hope that our physical presence strengthens the reality of those we accompany and that they know they are not alone. The second is communication, a process of amplifying our partners' voices, experiences, and demands. And lastly, advocacy, an invitation to each person interested in being a peacemaker, a worker for peace and justice. Building authentic relationships is the essence of accompaniment for CPT. Accompanying requires, if we are willing, a deep reflection on who we are as people who do the accompanying and how we relate to the organizations and communities that invite us to accompany them. We have been reflecting on this notion of accompaniment from an anti-oppressive perspective for over three decades leading us to our transformation of how we see ourselves as an organization. Understanding our role as an accompaniment organization based on the analysis of how structural oppression impacts our lives and the lives of those we accompany have changed how we do accompaniment. Our analysis challenged us to undo these oppressions within CPT actively. It is true that speaking and addressing the issues of racism, sexism, homophobia, and colonialism, among other oppressions, is not easy. However, in this process, we have experienced truth, transformation, and restoration as an organization. To reflect and act upon the idea of accompaniment is a continuous journey at a personal and organizational level. I am committed to this journey as a Colombian and Mennonite Christian because I see the manifestation of the liberating love of the gospel. 
This internal reflection led us to develop an inclusive accompaniment model in which not only white people with privileges based on their passport, origin, social class, and religion can do this work, but where CPT reflects its members' diverse life experiences. This diversity has enriched our accompaniment work. The communities and organizations we accompany have expressed how valuable it is to see such diverse teams, including CPTers, accompanying partners within their own countries and contexts. This diversity is reflected in stronger, more authentic, caring, and trusting accompaniment relationships we have with our partners. As CPT, we remain committed to building accompaniment relationships where the voices and experiences of those who are part of CPT and those we accompany continue to be valued, heard, and honored. To advance in this commitment, we must continue to reflect on our reason for being CPT, listen where we are challenged and affirmed, and be willing to transform ourselves and be accompanied on this journey. Would you be a part of this walk with us, accompanying communities and grassroots organizations? Thank you very much for your attention. Good evening. I would like to make a quick note about this uh, second piece that the choirs will be singing this evening. The original score has a small section of Croatian text in it. However, this evening we will be singing it in Ukraine. The translations remain the same.
las víctimas de la guerra. Mujeres, hombres y niños. Los sangrantes y los moribundos. Los heridos y los que sufren. Los encarcelados y los torturados. Los viudos y los huérfanos. Los sin hogar y los abandonados. Los cansados y los desesperados. Los perdidos y los desamparados. Los que huyen aterrorizados. Todos los quebrantados por la violencia. Our final hymn tonight is This Is My Song. For those on the rostrum, Community of Christ sings 389, after which we'll be seated.
Please be seated. Before I ask El Rey to lead us in the sending forth blessing, I do want to make just some thank yous tonight and then explain what we're going to do after the sending forth. I want to thank all the participants who have been involved in tonight's award ceremony. I want to thank our musicians, our instrumentalists, Thomas Vizella and Daniel Vincent. I want to thank the magical Graceland University combined choirs under the wand, I'm calling it a wand, of Dr. Blessing. I want to thank the brilliant IT staff who have beamed this service around the world and packaged those magnificent audiovisual messages that we enjoyed. I want to thank the marvelous Karen Peter who pulled this all together so masterfully. And finally, to the courageous team members of CPT and the generous members of the Shaw Family Foundation. After El Rey gives us our sending forth blessing, we'll stand and sing the song, We Are Marching in the Light of God. I will not introduce that. The music will just start playing and your legs will start moving. <laughs> While you are marching on the spot, at some point you will turn and march out of the sanctuary <laughs> in the language of your choice. For our sending forth blessing, let me invite El Rey Henriksen to read our blessing in French. The Sending Forth Blessing was written by Brother Stanislas Kyungu, who could not be here today. Receive the blessing. Fidèle de l'Église, Communauté du Christ, chaque jour, selon notre attitude, nous pouvons apporter quelque chose de bon autour de nous. Nous pouvons encourager, nous pouvons aider, nous pouvons être gentils. Nous pouvons devenir le miracle qu'attend une autre personne. Notre joie provient de la mise en application des dons de Dieu. Et je pense que si beaucoup de personnes ne sont pas heureuses aujourd'hui, c'est parce qu'elles se focalisent sur leur fardeau, sur leurs difficultés ou sur leurs besoins. Mais nous ne devons pas être focalisés sur nous-mêmes. Nous devons chercher à être une bénédiction pour les autres. C'est cette attitude de générosité, de paix, d'amour et de joie que nous vivons dans cette Église communauté du Christ, sans discrimination, stigmatisation ni tribalisme. Nous souhaitons un bon avancement du ministère de Jésus-Christ pour cette année. Que Dieu bénisse le président de notre Église avec tous les fidèles du monde entier. 